What's up, y'all? Silent Mike, Third Street Barbell. It's been a while. Now, we did some vlogs. You guys seen some training in here, but if you're new, I opened the facility with Jim McGee, my business partner, almost a year ago, I guess over a year ago. But because we've been caught up running the gym, building our community, dropping some apparel, I've never done an official gym tour. So, I wanna show you guys around our spot, welcome you into our home, show you some unique equipment, and some things we got going on here at Third Street. Um, appreciate you. Let's get it. So, if some of y'all are real OGs, like real, real OGs, been down since day one, you may recognize this building. Um, this building was kind of the start of my real powerlifting career. Uh, I was involved with coaching, strength and conditioning, and training for multiple years before I showed up here. Um, but this is the spot where Super Training started. Uh, this is not started, but that's where I started with Super Training. A lot of the YouTube, a lot of the podcasts, the Powercast to be exact. Um, and so there's a lot of history in this building and that's why I moved my business in here. A lot of sentimental value, uh, let alone I love the layout of the building, parking lot, the location being downtown Sacramento is beautiful, close to a bunch of freeways. Uh, but luckily enough, we knew the building and so we designed every single step to kind of be an experience and there's a reason and thought of how we laid everything out. Um, for those that don't know, our apparel company, kind of our slogan's good company. Uh, and we're all about trying to build community, train together. I've been to commercial gyms. I've been to multiple gyms, obviously, over the 15 years I've been training, especially a commercial gym, but even other strength and conditioning gyms, uh, you really get isolated. Everyone's got their headphones on, they're mean mugging each other, they're, they're fighting for plates, they're fighting for equipment. Uh, and we made our layout and our entrance here to make it feel a little bit more homey, more of a community. So we built all our front desk out, me and Kyle over here, uh, normally run the show, and we always try to welcome someone when they come in. Uh, it's not like a corny Jamba Juice deal, but it's just a what's up. Get to know each other, talk training, have fun. Uh, so you check in here. If you check out the first part of the facility, uh, we are barbell strength based. Uh, it's for anyone that wants to get better physically, mentally, etc. But we want to have enough equipment and the type of equipment that anybody could train. Whether you're a pro athlete, high school athlete, uh, power lifter, weight lifter, crossfitter, doesn't really matter. We try to deck it out uh, in your favor. And so. Other benefit of owning a, a gym is you get to choose the equipment you like. I'm a huge fan of hammer strength or play loaded machines. Not only do they make really solid equipment, um, but it's all plate loaded. Cable stuff's fine, so we obviously added cables as well, but the plate loaded machines always felt smooth to me. And I also want to keep it simple, so if someone wanted to get just a quick workout, like a circuit, they could do it. So we have an overhead press, nice shoulder press loaded up. Simple enough, we've got a, a horizontal press or an inclined chest press. So you get your two presses in, all you need. And the same thing, we've got with two different rows. So we have a vertical row, kind of more like a lat pull down. And then a horizontal row, more like a, a typical dumbbell row. That one's chest supported, which is another favorite of mine. If you don't have a chest supported, it's fine. But if you deadlift a lot or, or weight lift a lot, sometimes your low back gets fired, fried up. And something like that really allows you to isolate your back without putting more stress on your lower uh, lower back, hammies, glutes. Next we got a preacher curl. You always gotta build some biceps. All the bros need them. Uh, right here with the dumbbell section, curl bar, uh, a variety of utility benches. Um, a lot of our equipment is uh, hand chosen, so we use different companies, but a lot of it is Sornex. I think they make really, really quality stuff. Uh, and that's what this utility bench is here. All the way up, vertical, incline, drag it over a rack, whatever you need. Flat bench by uh, rep. It's actually a fat pad. A little bit comfier if you're a big boy, comfier on your back. Um, dumbbells, two and a half pound increments by Umax, all the way up to a hundreds. Once I see some big dogs starting to get in here, and if you can like rep the hundreds for 20, maybe we'll upgrade you and get some 125s. But until then, go bench and you can get strong, and then you can go incline hundreds. It it's, it's, handles the majority of folks. This piece is a little unique. If you guys have never been in a strength conditioning gym, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a powerlifting piece that's really expanded over the last five to seven years. It's called a belt squat. Uh, it's honestly one of the best pieces, in, in my opinion, one of the best things to come out of powerlifting that can be shared with all of fitness. Um, it's a way to train your legs. That's a little bit more free motion than a leg press. Uh, but takes all the pressure off your low back and your upper body. So if you have a shoulder injury or elbows get beat up and you can't get under a barbell to squat, uh, you can get the exact same mechanics here, really loaded up, some heavy weight, um, lunges, calf raises, you can do some rows on this thing. 
Uh, it's very versatile, great piece. And this is just some of our basic accessories. So we've got chains, if you like to lift with chains, a little accommodating resistance, some warm up pieces, dip belts, uh, and all the bands, whether you want to use them to warm up, add them to a barbell, etc. Here's our barbell stand, kind of basic, some of our specialty equipment's around the gym, but a lot of different style of power bars, um, deadlift bars, so if you power lift, depending on the federation you compete in, we use specialty bars. So a deadlift bar is a little bit thinner, um, it's a little bit longer, and it'll bend a little bit more, so when you're pulling, you're actually, when the weight's heavier, you will be pulling the bar a little bit uh, less far, a little less range of motion. Uh, the grips are a little bit more, the knurling we call it, on basically all these bars to start to handle heavy weight. You don't want your grip to be the limiting factor. Um, we got two Aleco bars. Uh, so Aleco is just a, a, a world renowned company for making very, very high quality equipment. Um, power lifting bar, weight lifting bar. Um, if you weight lift, for those that don't know, weight lifting is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Uh, power lifting is the squat, bench, and deadlift. You can do all those movements with any barbell, but the more specific you get into something, the more specific your equipment. We can go to the park and play soccer and whatever we're wearing, but you want to play at a higher level, you probably want to get some cleats on your feet so you're sleeping around less. Uh, and that's kind of just what these barbells are. We have about six basic platforms. A couple of them are wood. Um, typically weightlifters train on wood a little bit more than powerlifters, but you can kind of do anything here if you want. Rows, deadlift, um, anything. Obviously clean and jerk and snatch. A couple of our platforms are rubber, a little bit more typically powerlifting, but again, you can kind of do any movement you want on any of these. The benefit of, of, of training in a strength and conditioning gym is that you just need space, really. Um, you don't need a million machines because the basics work and they'll always work, and that's why I am who I am, this gym is what it is. Maybe you've never seen something like this. Uh, it's just a deadlift jack. It looks fancy, it looks like, um, I don't know, some kind of crazy murderer might be using it, but basically when the weights start to get real, real heavy, um, instead of trying to lift this up when it's got six plates on it, drag a bar on there. If you have a competition or you're lifting in a group, you just jack this underneath, gives you a little room to slide more plates on. This is a combo rack. Um, for those that don't know, it kind of looks like a bench press, but this is what you would use in a powerlifting competition depending on the federation you compete in. Uh, basically what it allows is for people to squat, and bench, this thing's uh, movable, you can remove it, it's locked in, but you can move it, trust me. Uh, and they allow you just to, uh, they run the full meat on one platform. Um, you can raise these up and down for different heights of the competitors. If the competitor is shorter or taller, it's all numbered. And again, we have competitive power lifters here um, who want to train on similar equipment that they're going to compete in. Uh, but also, if you just like to bench or squat, it's just a very simple tool to allow you to do so. Um, so what we want to do is make our place as versatile as possible while still handling slightly different equipment. So you saw the combo rack, you can bench out of that. Um, but de again, depending on a different federation of powerlifting, this is a competition bench. Um, same thing, we got adjustable hooks here for different heights, different uh, arm lengths. Uh, we have face savers, so when things get heavy, if you need dump, you have spotters. Certain competitions will use a bench like this, uh, also has band pegs as well as the combo rack, as well as all these. We have enough movable benches that you can bench out of each rack too. Um, so although it looks like we only have two regular benches, two combo benches, each rack, each station in the gym can be used for all three lifts. And that was kind of the, mold, the, the goal, is to be as versatile as you can, uh, to have as many people in here working together, working to get better. GHR or GHD? I don't give a crap as long as we know what we're talking about. And that's what this machine is. It's a great, great lower body posterior movement, really working the hamstrings and glutes. Um, it's one of the few exercises, not to get too nerdy, but you get to work the joint um, from both angles. When you're doing a, a hamstring curl, you're really only moving your knee and working the hamstring from the lower end. With this machine, you're going to be working it from the glute side and the knee side, uh, which is great for athletes, great for injury prevention, great for general strength. You can also use it as a back extension if you want to isolate your glutes or back a little bit more. This is our standard rack. Um, we went with half racks basically just to save a little bit of space. Because the truth is, if you have these things bolted into the ground, in my opinion, there's not a lot of benefit on a full rack versus a half rack. Um, and it really will just save square footage overall. Uh, so we can have more people getting healthier, more people getting stronger. Again, these are made by Sorenex. Um, super high quality. They got chin up bars in them. Uh, simple J hook. 
and then all the attachments you want. So you can throw pegs in here, you can throw bands on any exercise you do, uh, and then also the face savers. So you can pull these up to your height when you're squatting or benching, and just in case you don't have spotters or something gets a little hairy, you can dump the bar uh, without getting pinned onto the ground. So although I was talking mess on the half rack, we did go with one full rack. Um, I think they look cool. I do think there's some function in there that makes people a little bit more comfortable. If you wanna do like a pin press or something like that. And so we went with the straps on these instead. They hold the same purpose, uh, save you from a squat, save you from a bench. Uh, you can do rack pulls, although I'm not a big fan. Uh, but the straps just tend to be a little bit more comfortable. If you wanna do a bottom up squat or an Anderson squat or a bottom up bench, great tool. Uh, plus you can have multiple people working in here. Uh, we have a, a dip attachment, so you can throw this in there a little bit easier. People can squat inside, squat outside, deadlift, etc. Another wood platform, deadlift platform. Uh, another bar by Kabuki. Uh, this is their version of the trap bar. A lot of trap bars are good. A lot of bars in the world great, work great. But these just have a couple simple tools that make it a little bit easier. Uh, this thing rolls up onto its legs like this. Again, like the deadlift stand, you can just load weights a little bit easier. It has an open front end. In case you want to do something like a lunge, or you want to walk, or do a step up, it just makes it a little bit easier rather than potentially bumping your leg on the bar. Uh, two grip handles, fat bar, and a normal bar. One's a little elevated, one's not. Again, just trying to have different tools in here for different applications, for different goals, for different people. Um, so although we're a strength and conditioning gym, we gotta have a conditioning portion. I know all you meatheads out there are gonna be talking mess on cardio, uh, but truth is having a baseline cardio, not only for health, but for work capacity in the gym is a great idea. So we wanna have a variety of equipment. Un uh, unlike other gyms, I just stack it full of treadmills. We just want a couple pieces uh, to allow you to warm up better, be a little healthier, um, and get moving. So a row machine, super simple, concept two. A little step mill. Stairmaster, basic, great piece if you want to get your legs burned a little bit. The salt bike, something you've probably seen. It's gotten a little bit more popular with CrossFit and stuff. Uh, back in the day, you'd only see it like on a football field, people trying to warm up. Uh, but it's a really great piece to work both lower and upper body uh, and really get your lungs burning. This, honestly, is the best cardio piece in the world. Hands down. I used to do a lot more cardio when I played basketball and stuff. Uh, and this is one of my favorite pieces. Your knees would get a little beat up playing basketball, even though I was young. Uh, still jack you up a little bit. This is the most comfortable elliptical I've ever been on. Your joints, your body, you get a good sweat, you can get your heart rate going. You can still burn your legs because it can tilt up and get that incline going, uh, but super smooth. Um, now I love it, I love it. Spin bike, same idea, pretty basic. Self-powered, you got a little uh, adjustment to make it more difficult, less difficult with the resistance. Um, and then your treadmill, obviously. We want the big boy, we want to get all the, the most valuable equipment and the most quality equipment we could. Um, although it's a warehouse gym, I think those have evolved so much over time. CrossFit had a big part of it, powerlifting had a big part of it. Um, but back in the day, it was just known for having like crap equipment. We wanted to bring the, the, the hardcore, more strength and conditioning style vibe, but still have high quality equipment, clean equipment, good environment for you to get better. Kettlebells, the basics. You want to do some kettlebell swings, some overhead stuff. We have weights all the way from I don't even know what because it's in kilos. Probably like 10 pounds, all the way up to like 75, 80 pounder. Get your swing on. Shout out to On It for the, the kettlebells. This is my favorite one. Although although this is the house of the bears, we're the, we're the, we're the, the goody bears. This thing's sick. It just looks cool. You seen Planet of the Apes? No. You seen that? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I know y'all, I thought they'd bring an MTV Cribs back. I also heard that MTV Cribs was all fake. They would rent houses and stage them, which really broke my heart. Really? They're, that's what I heard. I don't know if that's true. Fact check. Help us, boys. And girls. And girl. There's like <laughs> one of you. Uh, this is where the magic happens is what I was going to say, because we don't have a bedroom, so like this is kind of the magic. Um, something really unique about Third Street is our bathroom. Again, going to the stereotypical warehouse strength hardcore gym. Um, you don't want to even go pee there. You don't even want to walk into the bathrooms. They're gross, they're broken, they're crap. Um, and look, I'm not the, the Four Seasons Hotel or the Marriott or something, but we want to make you comfortable. Um, so we have two cool sinks, a little fancy probably for our vibe, but we're in there. <clears throat> a little bit of decorations, my guys, shout out to Outcast. They were here on uh, opening night. You guys should have been here, it's crazy. Outcast just showed up for no reason. Uh, that, you know, the rest of that is. A little selfie mirror, because we get a nice bicep pump. 
You gotta buy stuff up. Yeah, show yourself. What's up? Tell them what's up, Steve Bash. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Uh, and then the, the real unique features, we've got three showers. Um, both ladies and men's bathroom, we've got three showers. Again, it's not the four seasons, this isn't going to change your life, but uh, uh, it is nice. If you have to go to work, we are downtown in the capital of California, uh, where you got a hot date, you want to catch the pump, clean up, go meet the date for some sushi, we got your back. This is the secret back room that you'll only see on this gym tour. Um, Part of this whole project started with Jim McDee, my, my business partner. We have a podcast. We've been podcasting together now eight plus years. Um, our podcast is 50% Facts. If you want to check that out, all audio platforms, YouTube, etc. cetera. Um, so part of the, the building of this whole thing is to mesh everything we want to do. Um, I love clothes. I love fashion. I always have. I love streetwear. So I want to build an apparel company. So we tag that into the gym. We want to have build a community here in Sacramento. Uh, a lot of fitness here and a lot of people, but they're they're kind of spread out training at different gyms. So how do we get like-minded people together uh, to all push each other to the next level? So we go to the gym. And then the podcast. We had a podcast studio, but it was off the road a little bit. Um, so we want to get everything we're doing under the same roof. So we built this little cool podcast set. Uh, honestly, Jim D built it. I didn't do much to do with this. I'm not. I'm handy, you know, but he's handy. So uh, all the cool lights hanging, uh, microphones, literally like a professional setup back here. Um, and then it's a little messy over here, but that's where we do all our apparel. All the fulfillment comes out of here. All the designs are ours. Everything's unique, small batch apparel. Uh, good company, 3sb.co. Um, and that's the back room. It's about time I get my pump on, if you know what I'm saying. All I do is lift weights. That's what everyone thinks a gym owner does. Like, oh, that must be a real hard job, like lifting weights all day. And you're right. I lift weights all day just to have 12-inch biceps. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for coming on the tour. If you're in Northern, uh, Northern California, Sacramento, California, Third Street Barbell, come stop by. We got day passes. We got some apparel on stock in person, man. Catch you guys next week. New video dropping every Tuesday.